the coolest outfield ever, today on Sunday Baseball. Once again, it's Sunday Baseball. Here's Indy Nidell. 1894. 1894. Grover Cleveland was in the White House. Coca-Cola is first sold in bottles. The Wright brothers run a bicycle repair shop. Nikolai II became Tsar of Russia. Good one. The Republic of Hawaii is established. Hawaii had a republic? Yep, for four years before being annexed by the U.S. True story. 1894. 1894. Yes, 1894. Today's episode is indeed about 1894, but a very specific part of 1894. Specifically, four men. Which four? The four men who played the outfield for the Philadelphia Phillies. Wait, four? <laughs> Bear with me, Larry. There are a few outfields that can lay claim to being the greatest outfield of all time, but today we're going to talk about the coolest outfield of all time and certainly the best hitting. Once again, the 1894 Phillies. These three guys, Sam Thompson, Ed Delahanty, and Billy Hamilton, patrolled the outfield together for five years, during which time the Phillies never finished higher than third place. But nobody, I mean nobody, could blame these guys. Let's take a look at them. In center field, sliding Billy Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton hit 344 lifetime and is the only person ever to win a batting title both before and after the pitching distance reached its present day distance in 1893. Hamilton was lightning fast, leading the league in stolen bases five times in his career and averaging more than one run per game for his entire career. He also led the league in walks five times. Walking is very good for you. <laughs> meaning he was on base all the time, and he led the league in on-base percentage five times in his 14-year career, and his 455 career on-base percentage is still fourth all-time, with a high of 521 in 1894. 1894! 1894, the year he hit 403. 403? Wow. Here's the thing, he wasn't the only one who hit 400 that year. The entire Philly outfield hit 400 that year. <laughs> All three of them? No, all four of them. <laughs> Big Ed Delahanty hit 404 in left field, one of three times he hit 400 in his career, one of only three guys ever to do that. He also hit 346 lifetime, which is still fifth all time, and he led the league in slugging five times. Now, he may have well done this more, except he died in the middle of the season in 1903 by falling off the International Bridge and falling over Niagara Falls. He was leading the league in hitting at the time. Was he drunk? And disorderly, he was walking the track after being kicked off the train, the team train, for waving around a straight razor and threatening the other passengers with it. This is according to the conductor. As the percentage of alcohol begins to build up in the bloodstream, the first part of your nervous system to be affected is your judgment center, located in the frontal lobe of the brain. This is the area of the brain that determines right from wrong. Delahanty was the biggest star of his era and the first real five-tool player. He could do it all. He could run, throw, hit, hit for power. In fact, he even led the league in stolen bases once. He's often forgotten today, but he's as good as guys like Bonds, Mantle, DiMaggio, all of them. And his mysterious death is one of baseball's great tragedies. Did he lead the league in hitting in 1894? 1894! 1894! No, he didn't, Larry, because other than the four Phillies outfielders, one other player hit 400 in 1894, and that player was Hugh Duffy who set the all-time record for batting average by hitting 440 in 1894. Now, here's the thing. At the end of August 1894, Duffy was hitting 442, and Big Ed was hitting 435. But during September, Ed slumped for some reason and hit 231 for the month of September, which is the worst batting average a 400 hitter has ever had in one month of their 400 season. Now, I do not know what happened to Ed Delahanty in September 1894, but I would love to know. And if any of you actually know, please get a hold of us and tell us and you will win absolutely free a Sunday baseball left-handed coffee mug. This is all a conspiracy. Don't you know that it's a conspiracy there? Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Hugh. Hugh who? You know what I like? Not yet. Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Duffy. Duffy, Duffy who? The feeling you get when you drink from one of these cups. Yeah. Knock knock. Who's, Who's there? there? Phillies. Phillies who? Phillies out with coffee and it'll taste extra good. Good sales pitch. Hmm. Yeah. Good sales pitch. Hmm. Good pitch. Yeah, good pitch. Good pitch. There you go. The third part of this outfield was none other than Big Sam Thompson. <laughs> 
Thompson was the old man of the group. He was in his mid-30s in the 1890s. But still, he had become a baseball sensation from when he broke in at the age of 25, leading the league in various times in batting, doubles, triples, homers, RBIs, and slugging percentage. In 1894, Thompson shone, hitting 415 and leading the league in slugging with a 696 slugging percentage, which was an all-time record at the time that stood until 1920. Now here's the thing, Thompson was the great RBI king of the 19th century. He had marks of 166 in a season, 165 in a season, which were records until Babe Ruth came along in the 20s. But in 1894, he had 147 RBI in only 102 games. Is this where the fourth guy comes in? No fooling you, Larry. No fooling you. Tuck Turner, the Philly substitute outfielder, finished second in the NL in batting with a whopping 418 average in 1894. Holy moly, why didn't he play every day? Well, Larry, Tuck was an abysmal fielder, and though he followed his 1894 by hitting 386 in 1895, he had a fielding percentage of 847 and was soon out of the majors. Didn't they win the pennant in 1894? Not even close. Their pitching was terrible year in and year out. Poor Phillies. Poor Phillies is right, but think. If they finished in fourth place with an outfield like this, where do you think the Phillies would have finished without them? That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final episode of season one of Sunday Baseball, but me and Larry and Swedish Knock Knock Girl will be back soon with season two, and there'll be more baseball, more history, more trivia, more weirdness, and more magic. We'll see you soon.